How tall is this roller coaster? Or this one? Or this one? Well, this one I've created in Planet Coaster to demonstrate a point. On the face of it, it's a simple question. But the answer might not be as simple as you think. Measuring a height requires two points, and in most buildings, it's plain to see. You have an obvious highest point and a base to measure down to. But roller coasters don't always have such clearly defined points to measure, and the way some manufacturers have chosen to measure the heights of their coasters is pretty controversial. Looking at the Guinness World Record site, it states the tallest current steel roller coaster in the world is King Dakar, with a height of 455 feet above ground level. But what does ground level even mean? One thing it certainly isn't is sea level which is the measuring point Blackpool Pleasure Beach uses to calculate the height of its Big One roller coaster at 235 feet. But the coaster is clearly built above sea level, and if we're going to use that as a measurement, then the Superman roller coaster in Mexico is over 5,000 feet tall. Measuring from sea level just doesn't make sense. So let's go back to that claim of 455 feet above ground level for the record holder King Dakar. Now, unfortunately, I don't have my own private helicopter and giant measuring tape to check these coaster heights in person, so the next best thing I can use is Google Earth, which shows the height above sea level in the corner. I've enlarged it for sake of clarity. It may not be 100% accurate, but in general, it'll do for my purposes. The very tip of the track of King Dakar measures 578 feet, and the height of the ground adjacent to the start of the track is 123 feet. If you do the math, that nicely gives us a record height of 455 feet. King Dakar is built on relatively flat ground, measuring from about 118 to 125 feet or so. So an average of 123 isn't unreasonable. But let's take a look at a different coaster that's also mentioned in the top 5 on the Guinness World Record site. Superman Escape from Krypton at Six Flags Magic Mountain. Now, ignoring the fact that this is a shuttle coaster and the trains don't actually reach the top of the structure, you can see that this design is quite different, especially with regards to where ground level is. Superman is built on top of a mountain and accelerates up a supported spike structure. Guinness reports a height of 415 feet. The top of the ride is at an altitude of 1,524 feet, so the base they're measuring from must be around 1,109 feet. But if we look at the ground around the station, we're about 60 or 70 feet too high. However, if we look towards the base of the tower, we find our 1,109 foot mark on the dot. So this coaster isn't measured from where the station is, but rather from where the support below the highest point is. Now, that seems to be a different method from how they've measured King Dakar, but that's how it stands in the Guinness World Record books. If we're not measuring from the area around the station to the highest point, then maybe Guinness have it wrong, and we should be measuring another way. Let's have a look at some other examples. I'm currently on my way up a chairlift to ride at Rodelbahn Pradesher, which you could argue is one of the tallest roller coasters in the world, depending on how you measure it. If you measure it from the lowest point to the highest point, this one spans 418 meters. That's a lot. Now, few people consider alpine coasters when looking at world records, but why not? It's a continuous downhill drop on a coaster track, and in this case, it's 480 meters. That's 1,575 feet, over three times the height of King Dakar. Sure, you're never more than a few feet above the ground, but the change in height from top to bottom is undeniable. Another example that no longer exists is the high roller, which operated between 1996 and 2005 at the top of the Stratosphere Hotel in Las Vegas. This coaster encircled the top of the tower, and whilst the difference between the lowest and the highest points was only in the region of 20 feet, measuring from ground level would make this coaster over 900 feet tall. So, ground level may not be the best way to measure a coaster. How else could we measure it? This is Taiga at Linnanmaki in Finland, and it's an awesome roller coaster. It boasts a height of 170 feet. However, when I visited, I remember thinking that the top hat, the highest point of the ride, didn't actually seem that tall. Indeed, measuring on Google Maps, we find an altitude of 236 feet, so subtracting 170 gives us a base of 66 feet to find. 
If we look at the ground level below the top part, we can't seem to get anywhere near that number. And likewise, if we check the height of the area around the station, or at the start of the ride, we're still pretty far out. This coaster isn't built on flat ground, and instead is built on the side of a hill though. So if we look at the lowest point of the ride, we can just find that 66 foot point of measurement. Now, I don't remember anyone arguing about the height of Tiger when it opened, but that's certainly not the case for this next coaster. This is Orion at Kings Island in Ohio, which the park lists as a giga coaster, a category kept for roller coasters in the 300 foot height range. From the top of the hill to the bottom of the drop is exactly 300 feet, but the drop is on a slight depression in the ground. That ground level is an altitude of around 720 feet, whereas the area of the station is all flattened off at about 733 feet, and the station itself is probably another 20 feet in the air. This has led to the coaster having an official height of only 287 feet, and endless arguments from enthusiasts as to whether or not it's a proper giga coaster. Another coaster I need to cover is Dragon Mountain at Marineland in Canada, which opened in 1983. There's an argument that it could have been the tallest roller coaster in the world at the time, as it has a height change of 186 feet. But as its lift hill goes up a mountainside and most of the track stays close to the ground, almost like an alpine coaster, it was never considered for the record. There's even a much deeper rabbit hole that I could probe the surface of. Many coasters have flags on the lift hill. Should they count towards the height or should it just be the track? Why not include the height of the train above the track or the head height of the rider as they reach the drop? Most of the tallest coasters are also made of metal which expands in heat, so the height of a coaster is always going to vary depending on the conditions you measure it in, and there's so many other factors that could apply. But I think we'll gloss over those major technicalities at this point. So going back to my planet coaster design from the start, where are we going to measure it from? The top of the lift hill is well defined and seems to be the tallest point, but it's built over a rise in the terrain. Does that make it less? Should we measure from the base of the station? And if we're measuring it from there, why not just measure it from the lowest point where the ride goes underground? There's also this section that juts out over the edge of a cliff. Should we measure the height that it stands above the ground below? At the moment, I think the sole thing that it comes down to when stating a roller coaster's official height is whatever the manufacturer says it is. And as I've shown, even the same coaster manufacturer measures the coasters in different ways depending on what suits. I don't think that's acceptable for a world record though, and that's kind of why I've made this video, designed that ride in Planet Coaster, as it highlights some features of a much larger ride currently being built. As I mentioned before, the current world record holder is King Dakar, but that record is set to be broken by Falcon's Flight at Six Flags Cadilla, an absolute monster of a roller coaster that's almost finished construction, and by pretty much every metric imaginable, it will become the world's tallest coaster. But records are made to be broken, and whilst it may seem unlikely that a coaster taller than Vulcan's Flight will ever exist, it's still a possibility, especially when you consider that there's been several proposed designs for polar coasters, which could realistically break the height if a company was willing to invest enough money in it. But exactly how tall will Vulcan's Flight be? The change in elevation is set to be 640 feet, or 195 meters, but that's for a section above the top of the mountain to an area below ground level. The largest lift section of the track is actually a launch up a hill, but it stays close to the ground for a good proportion of that launch, almost in a way similar to Dragon Mountain. The drop could be clearly defined, but it's actually a bit of an unusual shape, with an initial steep section then a much shallower run out where it's running over terrain, almost in a similar way to an alpine coaster, albeit much faster. There's also an area that juts out over the edge of the cliff, which is another point you can measure, or alternatively, there's the largest pre-standing section of the track, in the form of this giant hill. Now I can see a couple of ways that this could go. Either the world record will be stated as the given 195 meters, or as this coaster is going to break other records, maybe they'll split it up and award it different records, such as largest drop, largest difference in height, and tallest freestanding roller coaster element. I mean, Steel Vengeance claimed to break 10 world records when it opened, even if some of them were lies, and this coaster is going to be the fastest and longest, so there's probably a whole bunch of other world records you could give to the ride. 
I'm curious to know what my audience and other coaster enthusiasts think, though. Should we have a clearly defined rule for measuring a coaster's height? And if so, what should that rule be? And why do alpine coasters never seem to count when it comes to coaster records? Let me know what you think in the comments. I've been Rollercoaster David, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you again in another video very soon.